for joining us this evening here on indivisible i'm your host john stubbins we're proud to have you with us america honored to have you with us look uh we've got a great show tonight we've got jason jones with an update from the uh, southern border which you're going to want to hear and nate kane congressional candidate from west virginia with a brand new bill that is being brought up to be passed and it has senate support and congressional support so we're thrilled about that uh october 5th go to johnstubbins.com you want to make it to this event folks at trump national october the 5th again go to johnstubbins.com you don't want to miss out on the fun that we had down in nashville also support the first hour for men it is one of our partners and the 30-day boot camp for men let's heal our, our men so we can get our families back also set apart farms setapartfarms.org make sure that you visit both these websites they're partners of ours but go to johnstubbins.com right now and get your tickets for october 5th at trump national take a quick commercial break we'll be right back You guys, we do have the My Pillow 2.0 or 2.0, My Pillow 2.0, the best pill in 20 years. We've improved on the best sleep ever, and use that promo code Invisible. Indivisible. 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 Yes, sir. And if you use that, it's a buy one get one free. And I want to welcome to the show my guest today, my first guest today, Jason Jones. Uh, Jason's with Border 911. He is a uh, the chief correspondent for Newsmax down at the border. He's our hero down at the border. Jason, love you, brother. Thanks for coming on. What's going on at our southern border? John, as always, buddy, it's great to be with you. The folks need to know that right now we are under a major surge of Hondurans. Hondurans have been flowing into the country since July 10th. Now, the question everyone needs to understand and ask is why? What's the reason for this? Well, the reason is very simple. Secretary Mayorkas signed an exemption allowing Hondurans to flow into the country, and they are coming. And they are coming in huge, huge numbers. Now, to give you some example of what I'm talking about, in the month of June, we had 10,000 Hondurans that crossed between the ports of entry apprehended by Border Patrol. By the end of July, after he had signed the exemption order, we were at 23,000 and the new data from August has still not come in. So we doubled from June to July. So what's happening along the Southwest borders as the sectors are feeling it. Now I have been breaking story after story about all these people that are crossing right now. I've got some great video for you from Texas DPS elite aircraft division as they in El Paso sector are holding the line from the Santa Teresa, New Mexico border patrol station where people are flowing in across from Juarez on the east side in New Mexico, then being picked up by smugglers driven into El Paso to try to get to the stash houses because there's not a lot of infrastructure. And as a result, they're having these massive pursuits, bailouts, et cetera. But here's how it impacts Americans. As you're watching this play out, because I know you're gonna have the video on, and that is that these communities are being truly overrun. Yesterday, I broke the story nationwide that 17,688 people were in Border Patrol stations. I want to say that again. 17,688 migrants were in Border Patrol stations. It overwhelmed the Border Patrol sector. So they literally pulled every agent off the line and told them, you're doing nothing but processing people into the country as fast as you can. But that has left an entire city wide open to what's taking place. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, John, I have warned about the national security implications, and it is happening. You know, look at what, what's happening with the Joint Terrorism Task Forces. We've got FBI and the JTTFs and fusion centers across the nation looking for 15 Uzbekistanis who crossed with an ISIS-affiliated terrorist um, a few months ago. They have no idea where these people are. So the layers are compounding on the national security failures at your southwest border. 
Well, look, you and I and a few others like Brother Tom Holman, Chip Roy, we've been putting out the alert for several years. This is nothing new to us. We knew it was coming. We've been trying to tell people. They refuse to listen. And now you see what's coming to your doorstep. And, and it, you know, it breaks my heart, Jason. It breaks my heart because it doesn't have to be this way. It does no, it not have and to be this way. You have to remember that we, what we're going through, there is no term of irregular migration. I want to be very clear on that. Migration is set upon the policies of the government, period. Just like the policy I just shared with you. Why are the numbers climbing? Because we told Hondurans if they come, you can stay. Why That's right. did we have, do we have overwhelming amounts of unaccompanied children? Because we signed exemption orders that if you send your children, they can stay. Why do we have overwhelming numbers of family units? Because we have exemptions by DHS secretary that if you come, no matter where you come from around the world, you can stay in this country. And that is the real root cause of what is taking place. And everyone in the Homeland Security enterprise who works the border, they know it, John. The problem is they're lying and they're yeah. not telling the American people the truth. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're hiding it and they're doing it purposeful. Uh, it, it's, look, I've never seen anything like what we're seeing unfold before our eyes. Just like in your life, we've never seen this. I mean, it is a complete, yeah, very true. it's a complete roadmap to destroying the United States. And um, these people that call themselves leaders that are at the helm are allowing this to happen. And in fact, they're going out of their way to make it happen. It's unbelievable, Jason. Well, it, it really is. And I, you know, that's why I always break it down. You know, we always talk about Republicans. We always talk about Democrats, but we forget there's a whole nother side of this. And that is that, you know, the bureaucrats in Washington, you know, the people who swore an oath to the constitution, they didn't swear it to a Republican leader. They didn't swear it to a democratic leader. They swore that's it to right. the constitution. And this is what gets me as somebody who comes from the Homeland Security enterprise. That was my background before I went public. So frustrated that the American people were not being told, look, we have a lot of people in Washington and in executive leadership positions within the home. That's the, you know, U.S. intelligence agencies, FBI, DEA, et cetera, who are refusing to acknowledge what is being done and the national security implications that impact Americans. So if you're sitting at home right now and you're watching us and you're thinking, I sure am glad I don't live on that southwest border. Well, remember, the overdose poisonings that you're dealing with is a direct result of this open border. The right. adjustment from smuggling to trafficking of people through debt bondage that you're now feeling across the country, that's a direct result of what we've done opening the border. Now, overlay that if you live along the border region. These people are the abandoned Americans, John. They are dealing with overwhelming crimes. Today, I'm about to break a story of gunmen who crossed with CDN Cartel del Noreste, who crossed into the United States, got picked up yesterday. I got photographs of them. And they had, not only did they have dope on them, but they also had the magazines and, and ammo that they had just taken from the rifles that they had. They were being chased by the big military, Sedena in, uh, in Los Guetta. And they were being chased into the U.S. They dropped their weapons and bar either buried them in the uh, uh, Rio Grande River or they usually put them down right along the bank region and then cross. And we captured them. Guess what we did with them? AUSA, Assistant U.S. Attorney's Offices, no charges filed. Once again, this is what's happening. And this is the story that's not getting out. Now, you have wow. to remember, th this is important because these are the people that cut your face off while you're alive and they're videotaping you in Mexico. Right. These are the people who cut their heads off. These are monsters who I have been trying to illuminate to the American people. And our government is letting them go. Your taxpayer dollars are not being spent well. And, I, you know, the American people deserve a lot better, John, a lot better. Yeah, and, and like you said, for those people that live further north and aren't close to the border, they think that they're going to get off scot-free. Well, you know what? I just watched, well, I think it was yesterday, the, 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 the New York mayor who claimed himself to, uh, to, to be New York, to be a sanctuary city, He's finally waking up because he sees the numbers that are overwhelming. Look, this is coming everywhere. 
across the spectrum of the United States. And for you people out there that think that you're going to sit idly by because it's not at your doorstep yet, and you're that selfish that you think, oh, it doesn't affect us up here. So we don't need to worry about it. Well, guess what? Take a big whiff because it's coming to you. It is coming. And they don't believe it, Jason. They don't believe it. And the United States government, uh, with, with that in mind, the United States government, what are they going to do when, 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 when the carnage is so overwhelming because, uh, because of this? What are they going to do for the American people? What is, what is the American government going to do for the American people when the carnage that's going to take place in this country as of the consequences of them not telling the American people the truth, what's going to happen then, Jason? You know, look, the federal government has gotten so good at lying to the American people, we've never experienced what we're seeing right now, ever. I mean, they're being completely lied to about what's happening at the southwest border. And those impacts are being felt. They're just being felt differently than what we felt in 9-11. And as we come up on the 22nd uh, year of the 9-11 uh, memorial, when that horrible, horrible attack occurred against this country, I would ask all folks watching right now, are we not just as vulnerable as we were prior to that, if not more? And yes. the answer is yes, because you have to remember one thing. We are dealing with non-conventional warfare. The fight of yesterday is not the fight of today. And your border is being leveraged between state actors and non-state actors against the American people. This is the main significant difference. And the truth is the, the United States intelligence agencies have already failed. The intelligence right. failure has already occurred. And That's the right. American people are feeling the impacts now. But I will close That's with right. this. And that is that don't let anyone tell you that what's happening isn't fixable because it is what's happening at our border and what is happening in this country is absolutely fixable. And what these cartels have done to so many American families, they better get ready because very soon the world's best are coming for them. It's good to be with you, John. Amen, brother. Listen, everybody, follow Jason Jones with Border 911 with Tom Holman, uh, our, a former ICE director under President Trump. All footage uh, credited to Newsmax, and you can follow uh, Border 911 under AmericaProject.com, and you can follow Jason Jones at Jason, J A E S O N Jones.com, and Tripwires Triggers.com. Thank you so much, brother. Love you. Great to be with you, John. Be safe. You too. Jason Jones, everybody. God bless you folks for sticking around. I know you wanted to hear that. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Nate King. Here's to the overlooked the overworked, the underappreciated. Here's to the fighters to preserve our freedom, our liberty, our rights, our faith. Here's to the workers, the farmers, the first responders, and those who serve so bravely in our military. Here's to Americans who proudly hold tight to our values, God, privacy, freedom of speech, life and liberty. Here's to the patriots who love this country and everything it stands for, who should never be canceled for believing in America and the blessings of liberty. Finally, there's a bank for you, Old Glory Bank, named after the flag that represents the fabric of this great country and the people of Old Glory Nation, the engine of America. Now you have a bank that values your values. Now you have a bank that stands with you 
no matter where you stand. Old Glory Bank. We stand with you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. I've got uh, Nate Kane, brother uh, from West Virginia, a good friend of mine. He's running for Congress in West Virginia. And as you can see here, I'm going to post uh, down at the bottom his website, Nate Kane, the number four, West Virginia, WV.com. And for all of his social media handles, at Nate Kane, the number four, WV. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great. Been very busy, uh, you know, on the campaign trail and trying to do some good. Well, uh, look, I'm, I know you are, and it's uh, it's a busy time leading all the way up until the primaries through the winter. Uh, I understand that you've got a new bill that you want to talk about, and uh, uh, I want to let you have the floor, brother. Go ahead. All right. Well, you know, as I've been going around and talking to people all over the state, when I first started uh, campaigning, you know, I have my kind of priorities and the things that, that I, I want to do and that I'm running on, you know, the main pillars of my campaign. But as I've talked to people, there are issues that are coming up that are very specific uh, to, you know, to a lot of people that weren't really on my purview. And one of those things is parents' rights. Uh, it wasn't on my purview because my kids are grown. So, you know, I don't worry about the school, you know, trying to usurp, you know, my, my authority as a parent. But many people have complained uh, about issues related to, uh, you know, kids being pulled out of classrooms and and being given uh, counseling without the parents knowing what's being said about, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, gender affirming care and and things like that that are happening uh, about the the indoctrination and that sort of thing that's going on. Uh, parents have a right to know what is being taught to their children. Absolutely. They have a right, they have a right to to know. Uh, you know, what kind of counseling, what's being discussed during counseling sessions. Uh, they have a right to, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, be able to determine what school that they want to, you know, they want their kids to go to. Um, you know, maybe there's a school in a, in a, a neighborhood that is failing. Uh, the best way to, to fix that is to have school choice and, and be able to, you know, create some competition. Sure. And then some of the other issues that have come up that are, are more recent developments is this issue of transgender bathrooms. Um, many people saw what happened down in, in, um, uh, down in Virginia, uh, in Loudoun County, where you had a, a boy who, you know, identified as a female and they let him use a girl's bathroom and he raped a girl. Then they moved him to another school and he did it again. Of course. And so that issue, of course, you know, is, is uh, a lot of parents are worried about. And uh, and then one of the other issues, and this is probably one of the bigger, bigger ones that has come up because it's so evident and so in your face, is there's been a massive push by the American Library Association and the NEA has been behind the funding on it to push these books that uh, are sexually explicit, uh, that, you know, push these ideas, you know, and have cartoon pictures of orgies and, and oh, yeah. you know, all kinds of terrible things that uh, you wouldn't even be allowed to speak about under you know the FCC guidelines, right. let alone they're they're sharing these books in public school libraries. So what we did as a campaign, and I say we because I can't take all the credit for it. Um, there's a few uh, there's a few sections of the bill that I wrote personally, uh, but some of my you know some of my campaign volunteers were the ones that came up with you know the other things that are in this bill. They had already had that. And they said, hey, why don't you take a look at this as I started talking about this issue of parents' rights. And so we, we put together this bill. I went to my attorney, uh, who is a constitutional attorney, had him look at the language on it. We massaged the language a little bit just to make sure it will stand up in court. And then we took it to, uh, we put it out in a press release to, uh, to get the word out there. And we went down and lobbied, uh, you know, uh, Charleston and got with the legislators and talked to them and showed them the bill. And honestly, I, I, we set up two tables. We had the books and in those books, we had copies of the FOIA requests and nobody could claim that these books were not in our library. So we showed where these books came from, you know, directly out of our school libraries and public libraries. And then we, we showed them, you know, the, the, these sections in these books that are sexually explicit and asked them point blank. Do you would you find this acceptable for your 10 year old grandchild? And the answer 
overwhelmingly was, of course not. This is this is absolutely, uh, you know, uncalled for. So um, we now have a sponsor for the bill in the House. Uh, Scott Heckert uh, is uh, the legislator. He's the delegate for for one of my campaign uh, volunteers, and uh, and we reached out to him, and he was happy to sponsor the bill. And he already has enough votes in the House to get it passed. Uh, we also have four different senators that have offered to be the lead sponsor in the Senate. And we have um, about 20 signatures of various uh, senators that, uh, you know, would, su uh, would, would support it. And we are going to be down there at every interim session from now until the regular session to continue pounding the pavement and working on uh, getting those uh, senators and those House members to be fully supportive. We don't want this dying on the vine. We no. want this passed early. Uh, I would have liked to have seen a special session by uh, by Governor Justice uh, so that we could get this passed before the uh, school year. But of course, uh, you know, he did not uh, do that. So uh, we are pushing for this in the regular session, which will be in January. And uh, and more important than anything, we're praying uh, regularly, praying over this issue as well as many other issues. So these are some of the things that we're doing, trying to you know show. I'm trying to show the people of West Virginia of the second district. I'm willing to put in the work and the effort now before I even get elected and trying That's to right. show them that I want to earn their vote, not just demand their vote. That's right. I mean, not only are you doing the work now, but you'll be able to hit the ground running when you get elected. Uh, exactly. I, I have a quick question. The young man that you mentioned, I think you said it was Loudoun County, which boy, does it not surprise me uh, that he raped a young girl, then he got, went to another school, and he did it again. Is, is, was that Loudoun County? Yes, that was Loudoun okay. County. And, and that's also where the FBI ended up uh, targeting the parents who were coming to the school board. And, of course. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then Governor Youngkin got involved. My question to you is this. Were there any consequences for that boy, for what he did I, at two yeah. different schools? It, it's possible. The, the problem is, is with minors, of course, uh, all of those court records are kept sealed. So we probably wouldn't know. But the reality is, is that the school board should have been held responsible because yeah. they knew these things and they allowed this to continue and, and to, you know, this boy to get moved to another school with nobody being notified. This is yeah. quite honestly, you know, but, it, it's but, a major but, problem. But, but, the, but the bigger problem here, man, look, we're not holding people accountable for their behavior. That's right. I don't care how old you are. Yep. That's irrelevant to me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes, there, there are certain there are certain crimes of violence, certain crimes of, of you know, sexual misconduct, which I, I don't believe should be hidden, uh, you know, from, oh. uh, you know, those those things should not be sealed because then what happens is they go on, uh, you know, when they have those tendencies and that predatory behavior and they continue to do those things elsewhere. Yeah, and, and 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 look, as long as we do nothing and there are no consequences, that just emboldens these people to do it again and again and again. That's You've right. Got to hold them accountable. Look, yeah. we've got about thirty seconds, brother. Uh, any last thoughts before we let you go till next time? Yeah, you know, we're I'm working on on that that issue and and several others, but the the thing that I is really bothering me is when I look and I see a lot of the problems that are going on in the second district and and I start talking to people and I'm interviewing them and asking them what I can do to help. I'm finding out that oftentimes uh you know, there are people who should be engaged and should be involved and they're not doing anything. And uh, I'm going to be talking about soon another issue going on in Payton City and so uh, people can keep an eye out for that. But uh, you got a major water crisis there. Well, we'll keep our eye on that. You know, I know about water crises here in Ohio yeah. with the derailed train here that caused all kinds of havoc. Brother, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, Nate Kane, everybody, running for Congress in West Virginia. God bless you, brother. God bless you, too. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Indivisible with John Stubbins is proud to support my friends, Jim and Angela Holland and Set Apart Farms. Faith-led and family-driven, we're doing things a better way for veterans and their families. For all the ways to get involved, go to setapartfarms.org.
And now we have some important breaking news. Are you tired of the control big tech has over your digital life? It seems like there's no end to big tech's dominance. Well, there is a company called Liberation, and their mission is to liberate your digital world. And we're back, folks. Remember, this is the show where you put God, family, and country first, and we will always tell you the truth. That's what matters. We had a great show tonight. Look, the update from the border with Jason Jones is so dramatic, but it's so vital that you listen. And I know that you may think the dramatic part of it means, well, it can't still touch us. We're too far north. You're dreaming, folks. You need to wake up and get in the mix. Get in the fight because it is at your doorstep. Whether you see it or not, it's going to affect you. And you you think you're going to get away without having to do anything or make a stand. You're lying to yourself. And it's only going to get worse if you put it off. You know what procrastination is. Look, we love you. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless America. We hope that you will do something. Make your stand.